ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله قال الله تعالى يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله All praises for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we praise him we seek his help and we seek his forgiveness and we seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the evil within ourselves and from the evil of our evil deeds Whomsoever Allah guides, there's none to misguide him. And whomsoever Allah leads astray, there's none to guide him. I testify there's none worthy of worship except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, alone, without any partner. And that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his servant and messenger. My dear brothers and sisters, today's khutbah, I would like to share a hadith, a very important hadith and a great hadith. But before I do that, I'd like to just remind everyone that the purpose of when we hear a hadith is to try to extract the lessons from these hadith, from these sayings of the Prophet Sallallahu and then ponder upon how we can implement and how can that impact our lives. This hadith is Hadith Qudsi. It is a hadith that the Prophet Sallallahu narrates from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And it is recorded in Sahih Muslim from Abu Dhar radiallahu anhu أن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم فيما روى أن الله تبارك وتعالى قال and I will narrate the whole hadith in Arabic and then I will take because it is a long hadith I will take it in parts inshallah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says يا عبادي إني حرمت الظلم على نفسي وجعلته بينكم محرما فلا تظالموا يا عبادي كلكم ظال إلا من هديته فاستهدوني أهدكم يا عبادي كلكم جائع إلا من أطعمته فاستطعموني أطعمكم يا عبادي كلكم عار إلا من كسوته فاستكسوني أكسكم يا عبادي إنكم مخطئون بالليل والنهار وأنا أغفر الذنوب جميعا فاستغفروا لي أغفر لكم يا عبادي إنكم لن تبلغوا ضري فتضرني ولن تبلغوا نفعي فتنفعوني يا عبادي لو أن أولكم وآخركم وإنسكم وجنكم كانوا على أتقى قلب قلب رجل واحد منكم ما زال ذلك في ملك شيئا يا عبادي لو أن أولكم وآخركم وإنسكم وجنكم كانوا على أفجر قلب رجل واحد ما نقص ما نقص ذلك من ملك شيئا يا عبادي لو أن أولكم وآخركم وإنسكم وجنكم قاموا في سعيد واحد فسألوني فأعطيت كل, كل إنسان مسألته ما نقص ذلك من عندي إلا كما ينقص المخيط إذا أدخل في البحر يا عبادي إنما هي أعمالكم أحصيها لكم ثم أوفكم إياها فمن وجد خيرا فليحمد الله ومن وجد غير ذلك فلا يلومن إلا نفسه قال سعيد كان أبو إدريس الخولاني إذا حدث بهذا الحديث uh, uh, this is a long hadith reported in, in Muslim and I would like to mention five things about this hadith the first part where Allah says Ya ibadi inni haramtu dhulma ala nafsi wa ja'altuhu baynakum muharraman fala tazalamu Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says oh my servant now imagine this Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is speaking to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he is doing so so that the Prophet can convey this message to us. He says, O oh my servants, I have 
forbidden dhulm, oppression for myself. Meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has forbidden that he will be a zalim, that he will transgress upon anyone. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the creator, the master of everything. He can do as he pleases and none has the right to ask why he does what he does. But he has said that he has forbidden dhulm upon himself. Meaning everything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does is perfect justice. He does not transgress upon any of his creation. So the injustice we see in the world is not from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is from what the hands of people earned and what from the hands of people. وَجَعَلْتُهُ بَيْنَكُمْ مُحَرَّمًا And he has made that between us haram as well. Now it is many of us who transgress amongst each other and upon ourselves. فَلَا تَضَعْ And then he commands us that do not tr make transgression, do not make zulm. So this itself is a great guidance for us if we were to think about many of the ills of society today are as a result of the dhulm between us, either a dhulm that you put on yourself or on others. Allah says in the Quran, اليوم تجزى كل نفس ما كسبت Talking about the Day of Judgment, that on that day every soul will be rewarded for what it has done. Everyone will get what they deserve. لا ظلم اليوم There will be no injustice on that day. In Allah Hazari wa Hisab. That every soul when they come in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they will not be able to complain about some sort of injustice. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most just. So this is the first point that Allah prohibits transgression, oppression, and Allah is the most just. The second point in the part where Allah says, Ya ibadi kullukum balun illa man hadaytan. That all my servants, all of you are misguided or astray except those who I lead astray, lead uh, uh, those who I guide. Then he says, Fastahduni ahdikum. So ask the guidance from me and I will guide you. Then he says, Ya ibadi kullukum ja'un illa ma'afamtu. That all of you are hungry except those who I feed. So seek that provision from me and I will give it to you. Ya ibadi kullukum aarin illa man kasawta. And all of you are naked except those who I clothe. Illa man kasawtahu fastaksuni aksukum. So seek that from me and I will seek that clothing and I will give it to you. This part of the hadith clarifies something that we should think about and that we are in constant need of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The first part, we are all astray without the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why numerous times when we make salah, we say, إِهْدِنَا سِرَاطَ mustaqim, The guide us to the straight path, that we are seeking this guidance. And even though we are, alhamdulillah, Muslim, we do not know what will happen tomorrow or 10 years from now. So we always ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us and to keep us firm on that guidance. And then he says that we are all hungry, and naked to clarify that our sustenance is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not from our own selves. Yes, we take the asbab, we take the measures, we get up in the morning, we go to work, but we only earn that which is written for us. And it is ultimately from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And a person does not realize this except when he loses some of those things. When he gets ill, he's not able to function, then he realizes how weak he is. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this part of the hadith is reminding us how weak we are and how dependent we are upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, مَن يَهْدِي اللَّهُ فَهُوَ الْمُهْتَدِ وَمَن يَهْدِي اللَّهُ فَهُوَ الْمُهْتَدِ وَمَن يُدْلِلْ فَلَنْ تَجِدَ لَهُ وَرِيَّ مُرْشِدًا That whosoever Allah guides is truly guided. And whomsoever Allah leaves astray or leads astray, you will never find any guidance. And is it correct to say that Allah leads people astray? We say Allah leads people astray with His gut, with His uh, adl, with His justice and His hikmah. Allah guides whom He wills, and He leads astray whom He wills. So we are fully dependent upon Allah. That whenever we get up in the morning <coughs> and we head out in this dunya, we need to keep that in mind. That everything we are seeking, we should put Allah number one. 
that we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then we take those means. The third part of the hadith where Allah says, Ya ibadi inna kum tukhtiwuna bil layli wal nahar wa ana aghfiru dhunuba jami'a fastaghfiruni aghfir lakum. He says, O oh my servants, you do sins by night and day, constantly sinning. And I forgive all sins. Allah is forgiving of all sins. So seek my forgiveness and I shall forgive you. There is no human being on this earth that is not making mistakes, that is not making any sins. And if we were to be held account for all the bad we do, we would sure, sure, surely be losers. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us this beautiful way that even if you make sins and you make mistakes, as long as you come back and you ask Allah for forgiveness, He will forgive all sins. قُلْ يَا عِبَادِيَ الَّذِينَ أَسْرَفُوا عَلَىٰ أَنْفُسِهِمْ لَا تَقْنَتُوا مِنْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَغْفِرُ الذُّنُوبَ جَمِيعًا Allah is telling the Prophet وسلم, Say to my servants, O oh my servants who have أَسْرَفُوا عَلَىٰ أَنْفُسِهِمْ Who have basically exceeded in transgression, transgression toward themselves. Meaning they've done so much, so much bad things, so many sins. What does Allah say? لا تقنتوا من رحمة الله Don't despair, don't lose hope in the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No matter what you've done in your life, or what you're constantly doing, don't despair that somehow there's no forgiveness for you. Allah subhanahu wa says, إن الله يغفر الذنوب جميعا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives all sins. And this, my brothers, even if the person commits the greatest sin of shirk, of associating partners with Allah, if a person asks forgiveness and sincerely makes tawbah, Allah can forgive even that, even the greatest of sins. It is general, Allah forgives all sins. He is indeed the most merciful. So this point should give us hope in forgiveness and in the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For indeed without that, we don't have anything. The Prophet ﷺ mentioned one time that no one's actions will enter them into Jannah. And the Sahaba who said, Wala anta ya Rasulullah, not even you, O Messenger of Allah, said, not even me, unless the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala encompasses me. Meaning, entering into Jannah is not a compensation for the good we did. It is because of the mercy of Allah. But however, our darajat, our levels in Jannah will be according to our a'mal. So this point, point number three, is about keeping in mind the forgiveness and mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The fourth thing is in the long part of the hadith where Allah says, Ya ibadi innakum lan tablugu dhurri fatadurruni wa lan tablugu naf'i fatanfa'uni until the end where he says, Ya ibadi kullu insani mas'atun that if he gave every person what he seek, it would not, it would not, uh, it will not decrease from the treasures of Allah. He says, oh my servant, you will not attain harming me so as to harm me. Meaning, whether we worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, do what he commands us or not, we will not harm Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with that. Allah is not in need of any of our khayr or any of our ibadat. And you will not attain benefiting me so as to benefit me. All of the good that we do, we are not increasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in anything. So my servants, if the first of you and the last of you, the human and the jinn, were as pious as the most pious heart of any one man of you, that would not increase in my mulk of anything, my dominion in anything. Allah is saying, if from the beginning of time, all people and all jinns, if they were as good as atqa, right, as good as the heart of one person, if they're all perfect believers, that will not increase in the kingdom of Allah anything. And then he says, oh my servants, if the first of you and the last of you, the humans and the jinns, if you were as wicked as the most wicked heart of any one man, that will not decrease anything from my dominion. All people and all jinns, if they were as bad as we could think about, that would not decrease or take away from Allah anything. And he says, all my servants, 
if the first of you and the last of you, the humans and the jinns, were to come together in one place, Sa'idin Wahidin, in one place, and request of me, everyone asked what they wanted, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would give everyone what they requested, it would not decrease from what Allah has. Accept the amount that if you placed a needle in the ocean and took it out, that little drop that would be left on the needle, that would only decrease from the treasures of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This part, the fourth point, clarifies this to us the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How great Allah is, and that He is ghani, that He is free from His creation. He is not in need of anything. And it also shows us that we cannot do anything to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If we disobey Him, we are not harming Allah. Or if we obey Him, we are not doing a favor to Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who is doing that towards us. Allah says, وَمَنْ كَفَرَ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ غَانِيٌّ عَنِ الْعَالِمِينَ That whosoever disbelieves, he turns away from Allah. Allah is not in need of any of His creation. Everything that Allah created, is not in need of any of it. The fifth point, says, يَا عِبَادِي إِنَّمَا هِيَ أَعْمَالُكُمْ أُحْصِيهَا لَكُمْ ثُمَّ وَفِيكُمْ إِيَّاهَا فَمَنْ وَجَدَ خَيْرًا فَلْيَحْمَدِ اللَّهِ وَمَنْ وَجَدَ غَيْرَ ذَلِكْ فَلَا يَرُمَنَّ إِلَّا نَفْسًا The last part of the hadith, it says, O my servants, it is but your deeds that I record for you and then encompass you for them. So let him who finds good, praise Allah. And let him who finds other than that, blame no one but himself. In this last part, it is the clarification of the reality of this dunya, my brothers. That we are here to do a'mal, to do actions. That's the reality of this dunya. When we see Allah on the Day of Judgment, it will be nothing but our deeds, not our status, not which nation we were from or tribe. It will be our a'mal. Allah will collect our deeds. And if you find good, alhamdulillah, you will be pleased. But if you find other than that, you can't blame anyone but yourself. You are here in this dunya for that purpose. Allah says, وَضْرِبْ لَهُمْ مَثَلَ الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا كَمَا إِنْ أَنزَلْنَاهُ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ فَاخْتَلَطَ بِهِ نَبَاتُ الْأَرْضِ فَأَصْبَحَ شِيمًا تَذْرُهُ الْرِيَاحِ وَكَانَ اللَّهُ وَلَاسُ بِشَيْءٍ مُقْتَدِرًا In Surah Turkaf, he says, and give them the example of this worldly life. By the way, in the Qur'an, there are many examples comparing this dunya to different things. And he says, it's like the plants of the earth thriving when sustained by the rain that we send down. Then he said, "Al-mal wal banun azina tul hayat al dunya wal baqiyat al salihat khairun inda Rabbika thawaba wa khairu al amala." That wealth and children and all of the adornments of this world is just the worldly life, but the everlasting good deeds, al baqiyat al salihat. This is what some of the scholars have said means the lasting good deeds are far better with Allah Subhanahu wa Taala than all of those other things. Allah has given us in this dunya provisions and He has given us many things that we may enjoy. But we should not forget what our purpose is. The purpose is not to accumulate wealth and children and families and houses, but it is to do as much good as we can. For that will remain on the Day of Judgment. Everything else will perish. So these are five things. The last one being very important that we keep in mind what is the reality of this dunya. And sometimes we, we, we know this clearly, but the other reality of this dunya is that it has a way of making people forget what we are, what we are doing, why we are here. So we constantly have to remind ourselves when we hear certain hadith like this, to think about how does this impact my life? How does this make a change? Sa'id, one of the uh, narrator said that when Abu Idris al Khawlani, one of the ulama, when he would narrate this hadith, he would basically fall upon his knees out of humility and out of respect from what the greatness of this hadith is. 
It is a long hadith, but there are so many more lessons in it that we can benefit from. I mentioned five of them, and I hope that you take away at least several of them and ponder upon them. الحمد لله رب العالمين رب السماوات ورب الأرض ورب العرش العظيم وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمد رسوله ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد. I briefly mention our purpose in this world. Allah سبحانه وتعالى says in the Quran وما خلقت الجن والإنس إلا ليعبدون that I did not create the jinn or mankind except to worship me. This word worship, many of us have you know, a narrow understanding of it and we think that worship is you know, doing the five daily prayers, the song, the hajj, doing the apparent ibadat. If we look at the ulama, Shaykh Hussam bin Taymiyyah, he says, Ibadah is jami'un li kulli ma yuhibu Allahu wa yardahu min al-aqwal wal a'mal al-zahir wal batina he says that ibadah is a, is a collective term for everything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is loved and is pleased with. From the sayings, people, the things that people say, and from inward and outward actions, actions of the heart, actions of the limbs. Imam al-Qurtubi, he said, the basis of ibadah is to humble oneself, at tadallum and submit oneself to all of the duties, all of the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is why the ibadat are called ibadat, because we perform them with submission and khudu. So performing all of these ibadat, the dahir and the batin, for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ibadat. That's what we are created for. That when we have hope, we hope in Allah. Fear, fear in Allah. We don't fear anyone except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in that which he should be feared. We don't put our trust in anyone except Allah. So taqwa, as I mentioned in the first three ayat in the khutbah, all of these ayat are calling to taqwa. What is taqwa? It is an act of obedience to Allah upon the light of Allah, meaning upon knowledge and basira of Allah, hoping the mercy or reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it is also to abandon ma'asiyatillah, to abandon sinning or disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon a light from Allah, upon knowledge and basira, fearing the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we are doing these acts of worship in hopes of getting the mercy of Allah and reward, and we are staying away from the sins, having fear of the punishment of Allah. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us tawfiq to implement what we heard here today and to make our and to rectify our affairs. Ibadallah inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabi ya ayu alladhina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima Allahumma salli ala muhammad wa ala ala muhammad kama sallayta ala ibrahim wa ala ala ibrahim inna ka hamidun majid Allahumma barik ala muhammad وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين وأذل الشرك والمشركين ودمر أعداء الدين وانصر عبادك الموحدين اللهم حبب إلينا الإيمان وزينه في قلوبنا وكره إلينا الكفر والفسوق والإسيان واجعلنا من الراشدين اللهم أسلح لنا ديننا الذي هو عصمة أمرنا وأصلح لنا دنيانا التي فيها معاشنا وأصلح لنا آخرة التي إليها معادنا واجعل حياة زيادة لنا في كل خير واجعل الموت راحة لنا من كل شر ربنا لا تزق قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقينا ذب النار إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذو القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعيدكم لعلكم تذكرون فاذكروا الله العظيم الجليل يذكركم واشكروه على نعمه يزدكم ولذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون أقيموا صفوفكم